Hey everybody, welcome again to, um, I don't even know if I want to call this an episode, but uh, a, a little discussion from your people at Got This in Black, the show where we're democratizing fashion, where we're highlighting those dope black creatives on the scene. Um, for those of you who don't know, my name is Chukawike. I'm one of the co-hosts for Got This in Black alongside my uh, better half of the show, Andima, to my uh, writer today. How are you feeling? I'm feeling good. Okay. I'm feeling all right. Okay. Um, we are shooting on a, it feels like an off day, you know? Yeah. We had to, it's like when you have to come into work, your boss calls you into work <laughs> because you got to do something that you normally don't do. So, uh, yeah, that's, that's, um, that's the vibes <laughs> those, for today. Those are the vibes today. <laughs> those feels like the vibes <laughs> those today. Those are the vibes today. Yes, 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 yes. Okay. Oh. Um, awkward vibes, awkward vibes. A little, a little bit. Are we yeah. getting into the fits, or are we just gonna get into the shits today? I feel like we should just get into shits. I don't even really want to talk about my fit. Okay. I picked some of it on purpose, though. But yeah, no. Yeah. I do actually really like what you're wearing today. It's giving like very. I don't it's know. Like fall vibes. Yeah, fall. Halloween trick or treat, you know, something like that. You know. I yeah. just like I like the fabrics. I like the different, the different, the mix here. I like the. Mm -hmm. The inverted um, terry cloth sweatshirt material. Yes. I bought this. I can't remember when I bought this, but, like, I've only worn it a couple. I haven't worn it as much as I thought I was going to wear it. But today felt like a good day. I wore these pants. These pants are not uh, tailored like they need to be. They need to be longer. And if you see what's going on in the waist, it's crazy because I done lost all this weight, so none of my pants fit anymore. So. Aw, so proud of you. I need to get it all tailored, but all right, we're getting into fits. Let's get back to the shit. So, okay. So today, um, we're going to discuss what everybody in fashion is talking about. Um, if you're not aware, um, there's a brand called Pierre Moss that's pretty well known in the fashion world and just in pop culture and entertainment. Um, it's ran by a Haitian American, um, actually, should I? a Haitian designer named Kirby Jean Raymond, um, grew up in New York. And an article really came, recently came out from The Cut basically talking about some of the inner workings that have gone on with Pierre Moss. And um, we felt the need to discuss it, not just because it was a hot button topic in fashion, just because, but more because of the impact that Pierre Moss and Kirby G. Raymond, the personality that we knew that was portrayed to the public the impact that it's had on our brand like we literally have a quote from kirby in our bio like we loved how we would see instances where it was almost like he portrayed like this is me this is who i am i don't care if you don't know um and it's almost like he it felt like he did a uh, a good job him and Pierre Moss did a good job of kind of like highlighting a lot of dope blackness a lot of the history of black designers you know early in his collections um, he collaborated with like the Sean Johns and the cross colors and things like that as well too you know we spoke in a previous episode about his the first couture show where he decided to basically use that couture platform as a way to kind of highlight um, some of the inventors um, black inventors who you may not have known and things like that but um, this article has um, unearthed some things that <laughs> um, if you weren't like us, if you're not really privy to a lot of this information, you wouldn't know. So um, what do you, is that that kind of like the gist of like, would you have any, anything to add about like his impact on our, us as got this in black or even just you as an individual? Yeah, I mean, I think that we would be remiss if we didn't mention the reaction from the fashion community to um, uh, his show, where basically he had a commentary about police brutality and violence against black people. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that, you know, there's something said in the article about, not even in the article, but by other, and we'll get to the article, other folks about like, what he did when he had a show like that. Um, but I think what was important was that when he did have the show, he pissed a lot of people off. Mm -hmm. um, and in some ways, you know, folks mentioned, you know, him being almost blackballed at a certain period of time, I should say, um, and the fashion community just being really like, 
oh, you know, folks pulling out of deals and partnerships and, and things of that nature because of his choice to um, put police brutality on such a um, worldwide, worldwide stage. Um, and so something like that does take guts. Mm -hmm. um, and so, you know, I think that's also something that resonated with us when it came to him as, um, as a designer. And then some of the choices about how he showcased the culture, I think also resonated with us as well. Mm -hmm. um, For sure. Yeah, but I'll let that be it on. Okay. Herber. So let's discuss this article. Oh my gosh, Whew. man. Uh, Where do you want to start? There's so much to unpack here. There is, uh, can we can we start with just like the journalism? Um, okay, we could definitely start with that. I mean, you have way more experience in journalism than me, so you're gonna probably uh, trump me in this conversation. But I just want to point out, I was just when you're reading this article, it's like you're getting all these quotes, but you don't know who's talking, and it's like it's always like this unnamed designer, this unnamed person on the team, and it's like for me, it's like if you're gonna say something, say something, use your name, like. Because it's almost like with all these anonymous quotes, is like you can basically talk bad about the brand, bash the brand, but then nobody's gonna know. So, and if Kirby um, comes out of this and grows, you can really go back and work for the brand again, even though you just bashed it and said this and that. So it's like, if you're gonna say something, say it with your chest. Like, put your name on the article and say, hey, this is really my critique, and really give you know your sentiment of what you feel like. So. I think one thing for me that just kept standing out is like all the anonymous quotes were the most damning part of the article. Like everything that was just like, oh, wow, this happened. Anonymous quote. Like, you know, the ones from like, you know, uh, from people that were named, they weren't at the level of like them shock value than the ones that um, were not named. So I think that's one thing that kind of stood out to me in this article was the fact that mm, all the unnamed sources spoke the boldest. Yeah, I mean, I mean that definitely stood out to me. Um, just so everyone, know, everyone knows, um, the the writer who was a black writer is Tahira um, Hairston, um, and so I want to not do the thing where, like, I, I just want to hold her to the same standards I would hold any journalist to. Yeah, that's what. Um, black, white, brown, green, like. We know how journalism is supposed to work. Um, and um, one thing that I learned when I was studying journalism is that, you know, as much as possible for your sources, you do want to get actual, um, get them actually to put their name behind and say who they are. Mm -hmm. um, and the reason why that's done is really important because people, there's no rule against lying to journalism journalist there's, that's true. there's that's no true. there's no rule um in a well vetted a well researched article especially an article where you know it's giving expose um it's really important that um mm -hmm. you highlight who the sources are because yes. it makes your piece more credible so i think that it took away from some of the power of the piece mm -hmm. i still think that you know you could tell that a lot of time and work went into writing this piece i can tell that you know um the hair you know took her time to um you know try to paint as much of the story as she could um but you know i was just taught that as much as possible um, you want to get um people to put their names um next to things that they've said um, and we had some quotes from, you know, some of the greats like Robin Given. Mm -hmm. um, but even those quotes, I don't know if they added, they, they added, they added uh, more, uh, they gave like a little bit of a backdrop to like the things that have been, could have been happening and the things that, you know, black art, black designers and black artists come up against, which was great. Like that context is important. Um, but when it came to, why were they failing or why may they have been failings? Those names, if they could be aligned in some way and provide more context to that, I think would be helpful um, as well. And maybe it just wasn't possible to get those quotes from such big names. Um, but, you know, I think if you had gotten something from Robin Given, like saying something specific, um, it would have been a little bit more powerful journalism to me. Um, and I wasn't sure exactly what 
value those quotes were bringing to the core of the piece, which the core of the piece is that, you know, Kirby has not <laughs> been doing what we all think yeah, <laughs> or he, thought. He hasn't, he hasn't he delivered, basically. <laughs> um, and simple. those specific quotes didn't necessarily lend themselves to that piece of the article, which I think is the and pivotal, most important piece of the article. Um, so yeah, those were just kind of kind of my thoughts. Um, and I think another piece, and this was alluded to in the article, um, that you know emails were sent and things of that nature. But um, it's always great to get both sides of the story as much as possible. Um, and I felt like we got that early on. I think the article did a really great job of like showing both sides early on. But then when we got to the you know part of the article that's talking about how things were not run well, yada, yada, you know, I would think that more people would be able to want to put their names behind that mm -hmm. so we hear both sides. So that yeah. then at least I'm like, oh, it's balanced. Okay, now I have this person who put their name behind it who's saying, oh, this was, you know, not functioning well. Right. This person is saying, oh, it was. Um, so I, I don't know if it was as balanced in the storytelling as it could have been. Um, and maybe that's just, hey, no one could say anything good. That could be the case, too. Um, but, you know, that should have been pulled out a little bit more that, oh, you know, we asked for comment, didn't get comment. Um, yeah. I also wondered how much, because there were quotes from Kirby in the article, but, like, they're almost, like, sprinkled through to kind of just, like, and it came off a little bit dismissive. It's just, like, one or two liners, and I would want to hear, like, the full conversation between her and Kirby to where she got these quotes to see what else was said because I don't, it was only like maybe like three, four, five quotes of Kirby and it was like, you know, this situation happened. He's like, well, you know, this is not new. Like talking about the production, like, hey, you know, we're not the only company that gets samples back that people, um, they don't fit properly and things like that. So um, I, will, I would definitely want to hear like the full, like, conversation with Kirby and her just to see what else he was saying so I can get a little bit of better perspective of where his mindset at how he's feeling and how like you know obviously he wants to defend his brand like where it came through because the one-liners and the few quotes sprinkled in the article didn't do anything but kind of a little bit come off dismissive from him and maybe that's what he was but I still would want the full you know full of it to kind of like put my own discernment on what he said so yeah so yeah the article came out and boy it was whew, everybody was talking about it man like and it's funny because and i th and rachel amandi pointed this out it's like i think there's two sides of it it's the side that you know and dm and i on and a lot of people on we just know kind of like the brand we know the personality that Kirby has been presenting to the public and presenting we, is the key word. Yeah, presenting to the public what he what they've been writing about. And then there are people who are behind the scenes in the industry that have actually worked for him as the people that um have worked at the company and things like that. And it seemed like it was two different perspectives because in the, you know, on the on the cuts page, everybody was like, Oh, this is a hit piece, like you're coming at a black man, blah blah blah. You're doing this like a couple of days before Black History Month, right at Fashion Week and stuff like that. But then if you went to um the writer's page, everybody was like, Oh, this is great journalism. You did a good job and stuff like that. So it's interesting. Do you have a do you have an issue with the timing of the piece? Um I don't as much I, I don't I, I think I did it first I did it first okay um, and then I had to check myself a little bit I had to check myself um, on like so one I think oh gosh there's so much to unpack there <laughs> um, so one I would just say that I do not know what goes on in the editor's room and that's important okay. so the the timing of the piece is not always the choice of the writer let me say that okay. writers get a lot of pressure um, from editors, from, you know, the execs at the company to put certain things out when they get put out. So right. I don't right. know enough about okay. what was said to know um, why the choice was made to put out the mm -hmm. piece when it was. And it, I might even say that um, if I were the editor, I would go back and say, we need a little bit more. We need a little bit more detail before this goes out. Mm -hmm. um, and I feel like some of the pressure might have been Ooh, the Black History Month is coming up. Some of it might have been, 
oh, you know, they're about to formally announce Kirby's departure um, at Reebok, which we knew was going to happen anyways. It wasn't a big deal. Mm -hmm. I don't I don't know what happened in the editor's room. Um, and so I don't have like I don't I don't blame the writer for that choice of when it came out. One thing I do want to mention, and um, uh, I found a really great thread on Twitter about the pressure of what it means to be a black writer and like mm -hmm. the criticism that the writer has been getting um, because of this, but then also the people kind of like applauding, oh, this is great journalism. Mm -hmm. um, I thought the thread was, there's some things I agree with, some things I don't. Okay. Um, but... I got too many screenshots from this. But Shamir Ibrahim, um, who's a, she's a, a writer. She calls herself a cultural worker and essayist. Um, she basically, you know, reacted to um, what folks had been saying negatively about the writer. And she said, the, the visiveness of over the PM feature in the cut reminds me of the harsh reactions Darren Sands feature on Black Lives Matter movement in 2017 for BuzzFeed News. A lot of people called it a hit piece at the time. In hindsight, it was more of a canary in a cold mine. I understand the inclination for some people to be defensive and protective. It's natural. But there is, if there's a kernel of truth to the narrative, then calling it a hit piece is unfair. We can explore the context and circumstances that facilitate these results, but come on. So much is expected of black writers. We want to write sharp writing and meaningful cultural reporting, but somehow we are supposed to protect our community from public scrutiny. That is a that is ridiculous and unfair burden. Maybe if people were willing to go on the record earlier, a story that would be pleasing to more parties and show a fuller picture of what Kirby was trying to do in fashion would come to light. Mm. But we are not here to hide your dirty secrets. We are here to do our best job of analyzing cultural realities. Mm. I say that all to say a lot of people's gripes with inaccurate and in and incomplete feature writing should be resolved if they would be resolved if they would, you know, agree to talk to people on the record and not worry about their own reputations. True. That's a word right there. So I, I think that part is like it, it makes a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. um, and then it becomes, OK, like who is at the fault for this being a complete story, uh, incomplete story? Excuse me. Mm -hmm. Is it the writer? Is it the editors? Is it, you know, the people who wouldn't go on record? You know, who is at fault for this story? Not this not being as as well written a piece as it could have been yeah and everybody has a little bit of a little bit of um had to take a little bit of that blame as well me personally i thought about it and it's like i don't have an issue with the timing whether it's you know right before black history month it's like at this point black people can walk and chew gum at the same time you should be at this point where you can what they say eat the chicken and spit out the bones as well too where it's like you should be able to discern like what's good what's bad or whatever so i don't have an issue with it being a couple of days before black history month i don't think it was a hit piece um i just think that uh, um one thing i would also wanted to see is like you know some of the stuff that she's pointing out if if somebody doesn't really know about a business as well too a lot of that stuff that like misappropriation of funding and assets is not nothing new under the sun no bad management to the even to the level in the article is not nothing new under the sun i'm not saying that we should normalize it and accept it but i'm like that's the reality that a lot of people deal with and so it's like i don't want it to come, i don't want you to read the article and come off as like even though yes, this stuff is not good. This happens in a lot of businesses. Like, there's a reason why most pe most businesses fail within the first five years. It's not easy to run a business. Like, when it comes to a business, there's like three. There's a lot of skill sets. Like, one, it's the what's going to actually make you, make you money. Whether it's the product and the service, that's a whole nother skill set. Second, it's okay. Who's how are we recording what's going on in the day to day money that's coming in and out? That's like accounting and finance. Then the, a, thir a third side is the operations, actually running the business and making sure it's done day to day. Most people who run businesses don't have all three of those assets. Yeah. If you have all three of those, you're in a rare you're in a rare situation. So that's a lot why businesses a lot of times fails because they don't have all those three segments running. Um, at a good pace or running strongly enough to keep the business afloat. Um, I think one of the mistakes for Kirby is he tried to, you know, run the, try to do the creative and the operations all at once. And it might've been an ego thing. Maybe he could do it, but 
you know, now that the company has turned the way it was, it's obvious that he couldn't do it. Like he needs mm-hmm. to, if he's going to be the creative, cool, hire somebody to run the operations. If you're going to do the operations, cool, hire somebody to be creative and be the director of that. That's why a lot of the successful European fashion houses, you really only know the art director and their job is to give the creative vision. There are people behind there running the operations, the finance, yeah. the people, we don't even know really a lot of times who owns these bigger companies because they're, they gave the art director or the um, artistic director of either menswear or women's wear, this is your job. Direct the clothing. Whatever you need, we're going to handle the operations. We're going to handle the accounting. We're going to make sure people get paid and things like that, such and such and that. And that's also one of the tough things about being a sm- a small black in- business is like a lot of times you're wearing so many hats and you might not be able to afford people to do all those things. Um, so yeah. It, that makes me think a little bit about, so I think that's such an important point about, you know, what's needed for a business to be successful mm-hmm. um, and the fact that, that that is harder for black owned businesses. I think there's another added element, which is something that I didn't know as much about, but also like I wish they had put some names behind some stuff so I could be like, oh wow, this is really the case. Mm-hmm. Um, but then they have said that Kirby has been, you know, very open about his his past and his, his upbringing. But I think, there's a mental health aspect to this too. Oh, there definitely is. Like, he has trauma. He has trauma from his childhood, and he's trying <laughs> to run a brand. And it's like he, I, it doesn't seem like based. If we're gonna take you know these anonymous quotes as bond, um, so like you know him like being paranoid, not letting you know some employees if he doesn't trust them come to the meetings. It's like, bro, you can't run a business like that. You know him, people. People, like people have to earn the right to speak to him or pe- him not giving eye contact to people. It's like, bro, you can't you can't be a leader of a company and do that. Like, it's, you, it's, you, you can. Mm. And and it's it's sad that it's manifested and bubbled up in this way. But like, it is reality that like clearly he's dealt with some trauma. Mm-hmm. And we're not giving him a pass for that by no. any means at no. all. But like, because uh, he had you had the money to get a therapist and start addressing it based on how much of what you, all the money you've gotten from the CFDA from Reebok. You know, got millions from Reebok. Ooh, said, black, the black got, man needs to be in therapy. Like, you almost got black half a million dollars from therapy. the CD, CFDA. Amen. Like, you, Amen. Sh- you should Amen. be in therapy. And if therapy shows you that you are not equipped to run the company, yeah. then you have two options. Let somebody else run it or put the joint on pause. But continuing to run when you know you have problems is, is an issue. Like it's yeah. really an issue because it's only going to make things worse. So this is just a message anyway. If you if you have the money for therapy, please go to therapy, please. That's all I would say. But yes, he didn't have trauma from his childhood. We're not excusing it because at the end of the day, once you get to a certain age, it's your job to unpack it and heal from yeah. it and grow from it. You can't use the trauma from your childhood for the rest of your life if there's no progression. I'm not saying that by a certain age everything should be gone, but we should see a certain amount of growth. And I don't know. I just can't understand, like, running a company, having people and handicapping people from doing their jobs. Like, if they need to be in a meeting, they need to be in a meeting. So it's like, how are they going to do their jobs if they're not in the meeting? Or it's just like, I don't know, me, because I guess I just don't get it. Like, as a leader, I want everybody to feel, like, input. I want a safe space so people can talk. So yeah. the be- my goal would be the best ideas to come out. So the one person that said, like, oh, I don't agree with the price point, and he kind of, like, just shut him out. And it's like, no, I would hear that. And then I would see who else feels the same way. Um, and then not making eye contact with people it's like bro who do you think you are like you are not better than any human like just because you ran a company just because you know you brought in this money you're the face of you know black fashion for a lot of people does not give you the right to belittle dehumanize people and not making eye contact with people gives all of that so that just doesn't sit right with me and i just put like i was just like who are you and but then again we don't we don't know the person we knew the personality yeah. that was presented to us via what we see because that's all we can get is the people in the industry who had direct relationships with him that saw that other side and also like you know again we can't take 
everything is word is bond just because it's a lot of anonymous quotes. So it's just like, you know, yeah. where, where it's a spectrum. So where in that spectrum did he really fall? But at the end of the day, there was just a lot of stuff in the person that we learned about in this article that was disheartening. Yeah. Yeah. And I think like that gets me into like two things that, um, Rachel said, um, in her, um, kind of, and we're talking about Rachel, as in Rachel, Rachel Amani. She hosts the Cutting Room yes, Floor. Yes, um, yes, yes, yes. She she was ran a company for five years as well, and she also was brought in in 2017 when Pierre Moss, because Pierre Moss initially was a menswear brand. When Kirby decided this decided to start doing women's wear, Rachel was the first person he chose to be the artistic direct, director at women's wear. So she had a direct relationship with Kirby. Yeah, I think she worked at a company maybe two or three weeks. So she spoke about her experience there and just kind of like everything she knows because she's more of an insider so she has a lot more um context to everything but yeah, yeah. thanks for that that background um but rachel mentioned two things um about kirby that just kind of like make my ears go bloop mm -hmm. um one was just like his personality his ego and his personality and the second piece was his ability um and I'm gonna start with the ability because she kind of she mentions the ability and she talks about it and she keeps it moving and I kind of agree with that approach. Um, and so you know one thing she said that it's just his technical ability as a designer was not, um, you know, as high as another designer's technical ability would be. Mm -hmm. And I personally don't have tons of issues with that. There are plenty of successful brands where. You Ralph know, Lauren, literally. And she said that in her thing. Ralph Lauren right. is somebody who wasn't super technical, but he still has led a, a household name, a multi, probably billion dollar company. So that doesn't harm you from running a successful fashion company. Exactly. Yeah. And I think that, like, I personally feel that creative direction and the ability to be a strong leader um, can take you far in the fashion industry as well. Mm -hmm personally, um, if you, and also the discernment to be able to partner yourself with somebody who does have that te technical ability and be able to, you know, work well with them. I think yeah. that, that that also works as well. Um, there are some people who they are just good at the technical, not good at the other things. And so mm -hmm. it helps them to be partnered with someone like that. Um, you know, and you know, they may not be as great as the creative vision and things like that. So I thought that was really interesting. I, what I else thought was interesting, and this is something that like I feel like I was a man, like Rachel's really making me be like, I need to be honest. What I can say is that I could look at that couture show and there were some things that I was wanting from that couture show. There's some things that I got, some things that I didn't. And I was trying not to, I was like, dang, like this article, <laughs> ooh, this article is a little rough. They were talking about, um, uh, you know, so for the for the the Paris Couture Show, which didn't happen in Paris, um, basically um, it was an homage to Black creators, and so one item that was created was, um, you know, the stoplight. Um, and I just remember seeing that stoplight and being like, I don't know about that. Um, but I also know that there are a lot of things that I see go down Couture runways that I sometimes feel that way as well. Mm -hmm. um, but I think what makes up for them is that like you could tell like very technically that they were done well or someone is up close and seeing the fabric and seeing all the details and they're being like oh wow like the craftsmanship on that mm -hmm. and so me as someone who i'm not at the sh show i'm not seeing the the piece of clothing walk down um the runway i'm not seeing like you just seen the, the fabric i'm not you just seeing, seeing a big peanut butter jar coming down <laughs> from, <laughs> coming, coming down the runway <laughs> So it's like so, um, so that just you know the technical ability. While I I do stand in the fact that like you don't need to have the strongest technical ability, you gotta you gotta care about your fabrics. You gotta care about mm -hmm. you know the time and energy that it, it you're putting into you know bringing your vision to life. You have to care about those things. And it's just it's it's it it, it caught me off guard a little bit. Um, the where there was like oh production wasn't going out because you know he was under Kate Unger. He freelance designed under like you know Mark Jacobs and a couple hundred people. So I would have thought you know at least the clothing was coming out because you know sometimes I would go to Kirby's site you know a lot and everything was always sold. I'm just like bro you can't get this stuff. Like not saying like 
You know, a lot of this stuff wasn't in my price range. I mean, in my budget. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to talk about the price range because I don't even see the product and stuff. Like, I didn't get to see the product in person. But it's just like, you're not even putting out the clothes that you're putting out on the runway. And it's like, it's normal that, you know, when you do a runway show, there are, you know, select pieces that are literally just for the runway. They're not going to be sold. But it's just like, it seemed like these were kind of nowhere. But I think when I thought about the couture show, again, I'm a novice when it comes to all this fashion stuff. In my mind, uh, the way I kind of justified it, it was like, maybe, and it's just like, just just, just run with me. Give me some runway for this. Maybe he just thought, yo, when I do this couture show, I'm going to go so left that anybody that comes behind me, they can do whatever they want. Because the first black couture show was so left that anything after it is just like, well, Kirby did this. Why can't I do this? And it's like he swung, it's almost like he swung the door so wide that anybody can walk through it. Because you got, because... Because it's like it's always going to be compared to the first Couture show. And it's like, you know, let's say Christopher John Rogers come next. He can literally do whatever he wants because Kirby was like, yo, I'm just give y'all black inventor, black inventions and just walk them down the highway, walk them down the runway. It's like I did all the way left. So you can literally just do whatever you want. But that's how Couture shows are supposed to be. They are supposed to be all the way out there. And I think uh, for me, it's just the quality piece. Mm-hmm. They could be like he could have done some some pieces were phenomenal like the woman with the curlers like that Mm -hmm. that was a piece of artwork to me it was and i just think that 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 level of detail should have gone into every single one of the pieces and some of them i just was like uh i don't you 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 had a good solid start of an idea but you just didn't get it to where it needed to be Right. And that makes me think that, you know, when people were saying, you know, I think they say they normally spend like a year to do a couture show. And mm-hmm. they're basically saying like he started like two or three months before the show. It kind of gives validity to that statement, what you're saying. Yeah, which, you know, we, we know wasn't attributed correctly, but it kind of like, OK, yeah. you might have been right with that. Um, <laughs> but yeah. another, one thing that just like one of my critiques of the couture shows, the music selection made no damn sense. The guy, 22 jeans bouncing around with the with the dudes behind him it was just like it was like it was such like a contraction it was almost like how like you ever been in a room where it's like there's music over here and then there's somebody close enough that you can hear their music and so you can hear both music you're just like it's it's too much contraction like which one do i listen to which one do i pay attention to like walk listen walk uh seeing the models just trying to walk the runway with this um this artist performing very hard, strong New York accent with the trap beat, screaming gang, 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 gang. And it's like, I don't know. It was almost like the opposites didn't attract for me. Mm. Like, I think it could have been a better musical presentation. And it's like, you know, I understand, you know, we're not a monolith, but I'm just like, I didn't get that. Like the, the, the music choice for me was just like, bro, what are we doing with this? Like, I was watching this joint just like, what are, like, what are we doing? Like, even when the, uh, like, I'm not going to lie. When I first saw the show, I'm just like, I understand that you want to do inventor stuff, but I'm just like, I was like, uh, this, like, I chalk a lot of stuff up to fashion was just like, this is the fashion stuff that <laughs> I don't really get and I don't really care for because I saw the show and I was just like, okay. Like, I wanted to see, like, clothes, clothes. Like, you know, I wanted to see clothes. Like, I honestly didn't really want to see, like, inventions and stuff like that or if it's like okay you're gonna do an invention it's like kind of like go further like give me the first you know black designer that you saw and and give me an iteration off that or something i don't know i wanted to see couture stuff that people could actually go and get like you know one of one and stuff like that like i didn't want to see a bunch of inventions i'm not gonna lie but it's funny because listening in the rachel thing it's like i felt like she kind of like pulled me back into some of my critiques that I had of just like the Pierre Moss brand in general, because like, like when that girl said, Oh, I don't know. I don't know if the price point is matching the quality. I don't, I don't know, but I just looked on that website and I'm like, this shirt got one sentence on it and it's $350. And I'm like, this better be the best, like, this joint, this shirt better hug my body, like, in a way that just, like, <laughs> but, caresses I mean, me like a woman or something. Because I'm just, like, that's just, that's, 
that's fashion. That is I know, like, but, that price but is just like... I would be pissed if I went and got that $350 shirt and then I feel the material. And I'm like, what is this cheap ass shit? That's when I would be pissed. Exactly. <laughs> that's when I'd be like, cause you know, Hey, that, and then that... an- another thing is like when that drink got rained out in my mind, I was like, bro, did nobody like even like check the weather that day? Like oh my if gosh. the chance of rain would have made me say no. But then when I saw the article and he was like, oh, you guys are being negative. It's not going to rain. And it's like, oh, no, you're just delusional. Cause, because like if I had such literally the first Black Couture show is such a big event, I wouldn't even give weather a chance to ruin it. I would have moved it to a day where I know there's literally 100% no chance of rain. So it's like, why would you even risk it? I mean, I that, mean I could it's going to go down a little bit. People are going to remember that effect that it, it got rained out and it turned into something different. Like, that's going to be a Yeah, memory, they're going to remember that. But, like, also our good girlfriend who works in production, um, she was just saying that, like, yeah, like, your team is going to say to you, oh, like, there's a potential of rain, and here's the B option for the show. Like, that's stuff that people are going to think about. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's either A, you know, he didn't listen, he was denying, like it says in the article, or three, he, like, was not putting the people around him that would help him guide the show in the best direction, and that could be chopped chop up to the, the trust issue he got or right. I don't know but um, or his ego or his ego yeah. or you know which let's talk about the damn ego <laughs> <sighs> so and this is what what Rachel said and I totally agree with this like the other design piece the technical ability piece I'm like okay like you know but um, yeah people just saying he was an asshole <laughs> <laughs> and here's my thing, and Rachel Rachel said it well, and I'll, I'll give, like, because I always give a sports compa- comparison. If you play basketball, you play football, you always had a teammate that was just an asshole. But the thing is, they were so good, you couldn't keep them off the team. You needed them off the team. So it's like, if you're going to be an asshole, you got to be super, like, you got to be the best at what you do. Or you need to be super nice and not know what you do. A or B is your option. Kirby was like, C all of the both a and b because he was an asshole and apparently he wasn't super technical and i'm just like that's not gonna work like you can't you can't you can't be an asshole and not be the best at what you do because people are gonna wait for you to mess up so they can move away versus if you're just so good people are just gonna let it slide like he's an asshole but He's very technical. He's an asshole, but he does great creative direction. He's an axo, but he does the best production, and that's what it is. And it seems yeah. like he wasn't great at the technical, and he was still an asshole. And it's just like, bro, what are we doing? Like, what are we doing? And I will say that that's the one piece. I don't think I really need someone to put their name next to it for me to believe that that's true. Mm-hmm. I just think based off of, like, one, I, I, I trust Rachel Mondi is, like, I just – I, I trust her work ethic and I trust yeah. the level of detail and attention that she puts into what she puts out. Mm-hmm. And I think that that is a reflection of like of who she is. Um, but in addition to that, I've had people or I sh- I've, I've had someone say to me that like, you know, they know someone who's worked Kirby and they said the same thing. Mm-hmm. So damn, I kind of wish I knew earlier before <laughs> we had your little, your little quote all up on our bio, but no, like, <laughs> Don't do that. <laughs> um, and like uh, you know, tons of people have an ego issue, um, but they also you know tons of people also know how to check their own ego. Yeah. Um, and I just think that yeah, it just it's, it's a it's a disappointment that, and this is the part that like that you know is not really proven until someone puts their name next to it. But like you know, it sucks that your ego. It sucks that your attitude you know may have cost some people money like the allegations yeah. about um you know people not getting pension and things like that and be people being promised they would get a job and then you know everyone being fired and things of that mm-hmm. nature like that shit's you're 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 not you're fucking with people's livelihoods now yeah. and that's very problematic that is that is very low character and it's like you're like you wanting to be as big as Virgil is not an issue, but when it seems like that's almost like overshadowed everything else is like, you just wanted to be this big person. You wanted to be at the rock nation brunches and stuff like that. It's like, you wanted to be in the in crowd. It seemed like more than actually 
be a designer, run a successful company yeah. in the brand. But one of the things that really was like, bro, what are we doing? Is like when he did, I can't remember when the show was, but he had everybody come to that neighborhood in New York and he promised everybody in that neighborhood not only a ticket, but he promised them free clothing and neither was done. Then he made a, a I think it was either a t-shirt or a hoodie with the with the with the neighborhood's name on it and he sold it for like 350. And I don't yeah, think it was a nonprofit name or something. Yeah, and I don't think I don't even, I'm sure a nonprofit wouldn't even want that, but then I'm like, yo, did that money even go to the nonprofit? Did they get a cut? Like, so it's just like it's a, it's a lot of questions. It's a lot of questions on that as well. Um yeah. Yeah. I want to talk about one last thing okay. before we talk about what the future of Mr. Kirby, John Raymond, is looking like. Um, and that's just um, this whole critique of, um, you know, the fact that he's exploiting um, black pain, that he's exploited, yeah. you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. our culture. Did you did you personally feel that way, that he, like, was almost, like, elevated off black trauma? Because, I mean, his 2015 show, like, Yes, he did put, you know, Black Lives Matter at the front of it, but that was at a time where, you know, it was almost like Kaepernick, like his career could have went left or right. It just happened to go right, but it literally could have went left where to the point where it's like we never heard from Pierre Moss again after that show. They blackballed him. Nobody wanted to touch him and stuff like that. So in that sense, I'm like, I don't think he's I didn't think he was capitalizing him. That was like a legit risk of like, yo, I can lose my company, I can lose my livelihood, I can be blackballed or something I love, but I'm I still feel the need to tell this story and it just so happened that people embraced it. So, like do you feel like he like exploited black trauma and elevated himself off black trauma? I don't feel that way. Okay. Um and the reason why I don't well, okay. I, I think he benefited off of it, but yeah, I, in a way, but I don't, I think because it was a risk that could have backfired on him, um, I don't feel like he did it to be, exp exp ex oh my God, I can't speak today, to exploit <laughs> our culture. I don't think right. he, I don't think that was a choice at that time. Now, I might say later on, it started to become, you know, a choice. Mm. Um, I feel like he may have been swinging into that direction a little bit, um, but I think at first it was not. Um, but I also think that like kind of has done things to contra, con, contra, counteract a thing that's happening. When I think about friends in New York and like the brands that he supported through that, where that is also something where it's like we're kind of getting, <laughs> <laughs> we're kind of hearing two sides of the story yeah, on that. Like, like, where we've had Anifa some. Anifa said that straight. She said, uh, he did not pay for my show. <laughs> I pay for my show. Let's uh -huh. that straight. And it, the thing that, ooh, that just made me mad because, like, I want to work with fashion creators on the business side. And when I saw that, you know, template of the company for your friends in New York, I'm like, yo, that makes so much sense. Basically creating a fund, getting money from these bigger companies and funneling it to black independent brands so they can thrive. And I'm like, yo, I like that. But then the person, the person was anonymous or not. It's like, yo, how are you going to create this company to help? fun black businesses to make sure they're running properly and your business is not even running properly like yeah and like it's, and it's another thing where it's like you just had to put the right like it's like it's almost like you had all the resources and it's almost like you wanted to do anything everything you wanted to get all the credit when in actuality you could have created your friends in new york and hired three or four black people to actually run it and yeah. make sure it ran well. Yeah. And you would have still got the credit because it would have been your company, just staff. It just seemed like, it seemed like ego got in the way because it seemed like you wanted all the credit and you wanted to do all the work versus putting the right people in the right places in order to make sure things got done. Yeah. And I, and I'm like, okay, at this point we're just applauding the effort. Um, like, so like, uh, who decides war, um, you know, their uh, creator like tweeted a message saying, you know, Kirby's a friend and they did support my brand, blah, blah, blah. And that's just like one person, you know, so that's not enough. Like, and if Kirby's a friend, then he may be just ride or die, some shit it, what might have gone down. He just didn't want to, you know, upset yeah. his friend or put out his friend. Um, and I would have loved to the cut to, to get more of, 
from all those yes. brands and your yes. friends in New York and get try to get and maybe they tried and they couldn't get statements but to get more you know in depth with them but the way you know Anifa gave it up on her Instagram I'm like I don't think y'all reached out to her because I'm sure she would have been at least what she wrote on her post she I think she would have gave it to y'all because everybody saw it so yeah, yeah I wonder if they you know went through to try to get quotes from that to see like what happened there because Theophilio was in there it was a couple like maybe like five I, like designers I really wish they did that because that would give up just paint a, a better picture right. and I think that one thing we can say about Kirby is that he has made an effort to partner with well, not successfully because the, the partnership relationships never lasted. But he did like an, make an initial effort to partner with creators. Like, you know, the fact that he sought after Rachel Omondi that shows that like, you know, he had some good instincts about who to work with. Mm -hmm. The fact that, you know, Christopher and John Rogers worked in one of his shows. Mm -hmm. He had a good instinct about that. The fact that, you know, he worked with. It's like, it's like he knew initially what to do was just he couldn't, he couldn't actually foster the relationship it's yeah like he know how to make the initial stuff but he couldn't yeah. foster it and the yeah. thing is there is nothing wrong with that just put somebody else in between to get it it's like at this point staff your weaknesses you know like i know the people to hire yeah. i can talk to them and bring them in then once i bring them in you take over because i know on the day-to-day -day, i can't foster and develop that relationship needed to make it sustainable yeah. Yeah. and make it long so yeah. it's like you have to recognize that and say okay i know what my weakness i know what my strengths are i know the people to hire i can get the money from people i know how to be the face of a lot of stuff behind the scenes i need X, Y, and Z for yeah. you to stand up so this long. So I'm going to do my part. You guys do your part, and then it's going to be successful wholly. But again, Ego probably took over because mm -hmm. he didn't want anybody else. He didn't want rumors in the fashion industry. Oh, well, he don't do nothing. It's actually this person. And it's like, Brad, the, at that point, it's like, it don't really matter. It's like, as long as stuff, production, the, the clothes is getting put out, people's getting put on, at the end of the day, if you're if you're the face of it, you're the one getting all the money. You're gonna get some sort of credit, maybe the amount of credit you want. But I don't think that personally, I don't think that should have stopped you from doing that and running things properly. No. Or maybe he would just ego was so big that he wasn't aware that he can do all of it, and he really thought he could do everything. <laughs> like, cause it's literally some people like that. They they are so. Um, it's I think it's called the arrogance of ignorance, where it's just mm. like they're they're so arrogant that they're ignorant to the fact that they can't do it because. One thing about people who like reach a certain level is like there's this you need a little bit of a delusion because it's like you can't let anybody knock you off your square and stuff like that. But when it teeters to the point, it's like a fine line. Like, you know, how they say it's a thin line between love and hate. It's a fine line between that delusion and getting it over to the point where it just like destroys everything. And that's what we see here. Like, so. Yeah. Uh, uh, overall, this joint blew me. I'm not gonna lie. I'm just like you had. I'm just like you had all. You holding all the keys, and it's just like you ain't. You ain't do right. You ain't do right. Yeah, I, I don't know if I'm that surprised. I'm not gonna lie. Um, I mean, so one one last point, and I just think this is like indicative of like what we want to do with this podcast, and like what we hope to do is um. So I think that sometimes um, we can have blind spots for our own community. Mm -hmm. um, for sure. And I think that, like, I understand why those blind spots happen. And I just hope that we are a podcast that we can really give our honest opinions about, you know, things in the moment, things as they happen in the culture. Um we can, you know, champion us when we're succeeding. We can challenge us when we're falling short of the bar of like, you know, what we're supposed to be doing to either put out good art, either, you know, support our community, either, you know, it, it, there's just so many different things where I'm just like, you know, really just hold ourselves accountable. And I just also think that like, one thing that I will always say is that, you know, no one is perfect in any one area. No, like, they're just not they're not all. they're not like we 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 would be lying if we said one person is perfect in in, in all areas. It's just not the case. 
Um, and so, you know, we hope to at least offer a perspective where we can kind of unpack every side of an issue, every side of what we know about the individual. Mm -hmm. Like we can say wholeheartedly, we're not in the fashion industry like nine to five, like someone like Rachel. Um, and I think we're okay with that because this podcast is about democratizing fashion. Yep. Um, and so I think what we can promise to you all is that we want to, at the very least, you know, the different folks who we come across in the fashion community, whether they're coming out of New York, whether they're coming out of California, Texas, wherever, if they're black and they're doing something that's interesting in the space, like we want to talk with them. We want to hear their side of the story. We want to yep. hear what their decisions about what they're putting out into the world and amplify them. Yeah. That's the goal of this podcast. So, like, you know, even at some point in time, if the whole fashion community was like, boo, 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 Kirby, we would want to have a conversation with him. Um, because I think the point of it is just to understand the viewpoints of everybody who's black, right. who, who cares about fashion. Um, so, you know, humbling moment to hear this about him, but I think that's also, like, part of our process. Like, mm -hmm. you know, as we learn more and more about the industry, as we learn more and more about fashion, what it means to be a brand, um, you know, it's we'll come to understand more um, about the way that this world works and what we like about it, what we don't like about it, and mm -hmm. what we think you should know about it. So, yeah. and I guess another thing I want to point out too is like when you are cr a creative and you put out content, it's like there has to be also like some grace because there's there's a there's a there's a, a braveness you have to have to put things in the world because I just think about a lot of times when somebody blows up and they go through their old tweets and they're like oh you believe this you believe this and it's like that was three years ago are you the same like if you just think yourself are you the same person you were three years ago are you even the same person you were last month if you are a constantly progressing human being there's stuff that's going to be put out there especially if you're a creative and you put stuff out in the world where you're not going to agree with it so I just say this to say this about this, especially with this show. You know, as we create content, we might look back in at season five and look back at season one like, oh, we shouldn't have did that. Or season two, yeah. like, mm, we didn't think that. So it's like I think there has to be also some grace as well too and also understand that a lot of times – when people are doing stuff, they're doing stuff with the information that they have at the moment. You're never going to have all the information. So you make the best informed opinion and inf informed decision based off the information you have now. When new information comes later, your decision may change. Or as you might have moved on and don't feel like really addressing it. So that's I do want to also end the understanding. There, there has to be a grace to it because, again, it's not easy, like, running a fashion company. Like, it's so hard when the timing of what goes into just production and things like that and how missing one thing can really cause a line to be not successful as well too. It's definitely not easy at all. And I'm saying this as somebody who's never done it, but because I've worked in business and kind of see like the business side, just like through like accounting, there's so much to just so much complexity to it that there has to be some grace and understanding for uh, fashion, running a fashion company and not being successful. There's so much that goes into it. So there is some grace there, but it's just like, there's really just some big, like, no, like nose that he did. And it's the being the asshole. It's not focusing on what a fashion company is. If you're going to call yourself a fashion company, you have to put out product. You weren't putting out product like you should be. The pro the quality was not good. You were making promises that you were not keeping. You were, burning bridges with allies allegedly and it's like <laughs> every time i hear a burning bridge i just laugh because i think of that dj khaled quote when he was in some interview he was like don't burn bridges you can can you walk on water then don't burn bridges <laughs> i just i just think about that every time that joke makes me laugh so but it's so true it's like bro you should not be burning bridges like like because you never know like the same people you see on the way up you gonna see on the way down so just might be mindful of that on your rise. The same people you gonna see on the way up is the same people you gonna see on the way down. So the way you treat people on your way up is how people are gonna treat you on your way down. Yeah. I, ideally, you know, some people are gonna be two faced, like Rachel was talking about in the industry, where they're gonna be at your birthday party, but they're gonna be giving anonymous quotes to the cut behind your back. So. <laughs> but you can't help it with those people, you know. Right. Like if you're if you're a person of integrity, how you treat people really shouldn't super change. Like you still should treat people with genuineness, treat them as a human being. Don't he dehumanize them. Don't be not having eye contact with them or making them feel less than or little. That's just that's corny. Yeah. Period. 
Point so. blank. Uh, With that being said, mm-hmm. us giving Kirby some grace. Yes. Let's talk about the future. He has so, a chance to bounce back. I think he I think he has a chance to bounce back and I hope that he's learned something from this. Yes. That I think he's learned that you can't be an asshole an asshole and and can expect that to sustain you mm-hmm. even in an industry where you know, you got some two faced people. It's not gonna work. Or if you um, wanna be an asshole, you need to get your technical ability <laughs> all the way up. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Like, it's it's not it's not it's it's not given. So <laughs> yeah. So hopefully he's learned something. I mean, on the horizon, obviously, you know, his last day with Reebok is March first. Um, his last collection is releasing towards the end of I think it's the end of March. Um either either end of March or end of February, one of the two. Okay. Um and so, you know, the ball's in his court to maybe own some of his mistakes. And own some of his mistakes, <laughs> change your ways. And change and learn from correct it. correct people because apparently he was, you know, he was flossing with some of the money with the Airbnbs and the mm-hmm. brunches and the events, the fancy cars and stuff like that as well, too. So it's like, you if you're going to gonna get some more funding, they're going to need somebody who... It's really on the money side yeah. as well, too, making sure that the money's going towards yeah. what it's supposed to be yeah. going towards. But, you know, I really hope that he does, like we said, learn from his mistakes, bounce, bounce back. And I pray that this is a nice comeback story. And Yeah, don't let down those people who still believe in you, Kirby. That, don't do it. Uh, he's done wrong. And it's like even a lot of those, if those people still don't want to mess with you, at least try to do right by them, even if they don't still want to rock with you. It's like, you know, I know I did you wrong, but – this is me trying to this is me owning my mistake this is me trying to you know manifest and do things right is i think that's the least you can do yeah so yeah yeah we taking a quote out of our bio yeah it's gotta go i'm sorry yeah it's gotta go but thank you for the inspiration though i'm not gonna lie you you from our optics and what we were given you really did some good things for just the black culture and blackness and putting us in front of a, um, on the big screen. I still just flash back to, I can't, I think it was his first, the collection one. Was that the joint when Brent Fires came out singing with the choir? Mm-hmm. I love that. Just like that interest in everything was just so like beautiful, adding the choir into his shows and stuff like that was just beautiful and things like that. So thank you for, all the inspiration, but please change, get help, get therapy, and turn things around for the good. I'm I'm looking forward to a Pierre Moss comeback story, and I'm looking for a complete shift and change. Um, but it's just like it's just funny because a lot of a lot of critique was like, oh, like you know, like I think uh, Fash Bomb Daily was like, oh, you know, black owners don't have a chance to you know, fail and, you know, um, make changes and stuff like that because they made this, like, article. And it's like, we should be able to call out people who aren't doing things right. And that shouldn't be that bad to the point that, you know, we completely write them off. It's like, no, this actually happened and need to be said. Like, it could have said, could have been said behind closed doors. It was said publicly it doesn't matter like i know we as black people we would we would love it if we could not speak in front of mixed company but that's just not an option so we should be at the point as people where we should be able to critique people in public but also they can change and then we can accept the change person as well too so i don't i don't want to hear no more that oh like you know you're attacking a black company it's like no somebody's doing wrong black white whatever we should be able to call them out but we also should be able to give them another opportunity to do what they do so i hope the carings of the world i hope the reeboks of the world are not close to giving um, another black designer. Ooh, a I thought shot. you said Karen. You said caring. Caring. I'm looking at Diva Trick. <laughs> oh God. But yeah, I hope the carings of the world. I hope the Reeboks of the world yeah. are willing to give another black designer a shot that Kirby didn't, and even also give Kirby another shot if he shows that things have changed and he gives you a plan that you're comfortable with how he's going to run things. I don't want that to stop, and so. Yeah, because it's hard enough to get funding as a black person. So I understand a lot of people pissed off because it's like you got this once in a lifetime opportunity yeah. and you squandered it and you might have closed the door on some people. But at the end of the day, if those funders or whatever are willing to close the door on future black designers because of one black designer, I think that is a testament 
to more of who they are versus yeah. who we I are. I guess they're not paying attention to all the other white designers who had some issues too. So um. I mean, but you know, they don't in their community they don't see it the same way. Like it's just we're always <sighs> gonna stick out. It's always gonna be more. I know, more I know, but I'm so. just, I'm just saying. No, you're right. It needs to be said. So yeah, I think that's it. Think that's it. That's it. All right. So yes. Yeah. Thanks, y'all, to, for listening. Thanks, y'all. Been, we appreciate y'all. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a lot to unpack. Let me just say that. <laughs> yeah. And this is a straight, this is coming out. We're not sending it to nobody to edit or whatever. What you're going to see is what you're going to get. So if the Stream of thought. sound is not good, cool. If the video is not there, whatever. This just had to come out just because mm -hmm. the time sensitive sensitivity of this content anyway, it needs to come out ASAP because I feel like we're even, you know, we're in like we're getting to that point where it's like it might get cold and with that cold. what i will say is our next episode is dropping soon very soon. follow at gothis and black gothis and black on twitter instagram, instagram the TikTok. TikTok. uh like and subscribe on youtube subscribe and like on apple Podcasts, spotify rate us. give us some ratings google Podcasts. Yeah. rate us and mess with us dog we need to interact talk to us we'll talk back i promise so yeah. Reporting live from the GTIB headquarters. We appreciate y'all. Peace. <laughs>